just for this wrap-up session, um, we had planned a, a bit of an open panel discussion about, uh, well, the Moodle community in general, including uh, um, Moodle partners and uh, everything that makes that work. But we can talk about anything you want to talk about. If you've got something you want to raise, um, I think we should just have a bit of an open discussion. So let's start with the community, looking at the community stuff. And if we run out of steam and we want to finish early, let's finish early. I think we can go home and have a rest before House of Blues. I know quite a few people here haven't had enough sleep um, lately. So you might need a little nap for uh, staying up to 2 a.m. Um, we just got a really... Uh, was it Ken? Is your name Ken? Was it Jim? Sorry, Jim just gave me a really, uh, a really useful list of places to go uh, in the other room. Um, which you may want to repeat afterwards because I think it's really useful information. So, uh, we, we, we did discuss before about this idea of a community 2.0 and there was a session that uh, Tom ran with some really great ideas and uh, that's an ongoing project of creating a, a new space for people to share, for people to find each other uh, and have discussions and it will probably largely replace some of what's going on on our current community site, Moodle.org. But uh, what will stay there is the open source project and development side of things. Um, and so there was a suggestion that we, we look at some of these things and see if it triggers off any painful memories that you have or ideas about things that you think we should really do. Now's the time for that sort of feedback. So, um, uh, Let's just look here first at our documentation. How do you feel about our Moodle documentation? Anybody got any thoughts? Inconsistent with what? <laughs> Inconsistent with existence. Um, I feel like that uh, on low sleep as well. The um, uh, yes, yeah, probably. Um, it's a wiki and it's huge and it relies on the community be it being a wiki. Um, although we have people who spend quite a lot of time every release updating stuff and so on. Um, had you noticed that every page in Moodle leads to a page in the wiki? Yeah. Are you using it in English? Yeah. The English version has the most consistency and the most content, I would say, for sure. Um, yeah. Lack of pages. Okay, it's great to hear, because it, there is a lot of work to go into this over the years. Um, yeah. So, Um, and if you come to an empty page, you don't even have to answer the, you don't have to write the page. You can just write what you think should be on that page. There should really be this here. And that, that might trigger the next person. Uh, yeah. Just 
go for it. <laughs> it's, it's a bit, uh, there, there is no process that I know of. I know that Mary and Helen, uh, for Mary Cooch, who you'll see doing the videos on releases and uh, quite a lot of the release work, um, and Helen Foster, who's the community manager and is like a, a little bee that flutters all over and we will go all. Uh, they will often add things as they come up in the forums, but uh, that's about the limit of the process, I think. I think if you felt there was a frequently asked question from your staff uh, and you're maybe about the course, uh, you can just totally hit edit and, uh, and just go for it. Add it. Yes. Yeah. Every page has an edit button and you just edit it. It's a w yeah. So you need to write it in this wiki type format. You can see, um, you know, this is a heading. It has the equal signs on each side. So it's all plain text that you type. Uh, but generally, you can just type stuff and it works fine. Yeah, at the bottom. Uh, at the bottom, there's editing help, and it's got full information on how to do all the formatting. Nope. Okay. Blackboard is a completely different company and, and project to Moodle. <laughs> See what happens? <laughs> um, yeah, uh, look, uh, anyone up here? Come on, you're sitting up here. Has anyone got any opinions about documentation or something to say? I think you've got a microphone. I think that one of the things that uh, I've been thinking about with documentation and sharing with people is the idea that uh, we come to documentation at different stages. Sometimes we come to um, remember something, and sometimes we come to kind of understand what it's all about. And, and there are probably three or four or five different other reasons for us to, to, to visit a page. The problem is the page has to satisfy all of those needs at the same time, which is a somewhat complicated process. So short of saying, here's the reminder wiki, which is kind of a shorthand of what's in the learning wiki, um, uh, we need to think about some solutions there. If you've got ideas, um, you know, please share it with us. You can reach out to Mary at Moodle.com. Um, you can reach out to Helen at Moodle.com or Tom at Moodle.com, and we would love to hear, hear your ideas. But, but you know, eventually, it, it makes sense for us to be um, providing uh, the right information, um, but also the right information for uh, uh, where you are in your learning process. Whether it's starting at the beginning and you don't have, you know the benefit of something, um, or whether you're trying to remember something, or certainly the technical aspects and, and uh, the deeper aspects of it. So it's pretty complicated. I'm also impressed by Moodle Docs um, and spend hours and hours learning things from it. Um, but but uh, I struggle with ways to make it better and uh, uh, I'm dedicating myself to it. I wouldn't worry too much, just go for it. Like, uh, even slightly wrong information or, you know, different terms. What, uh, what we're saying right now is the documentation is done by a new IQ as opposed to a new driven. I don't know the answer, but it feels like we do most of it. Yeah. <laughs> so, with that in mind, um, I, I think that does make sense because I think to your point uh, that you know, sometimes you don't know if you're going to maybe edit it in a way that uh, throws off what that documentation means to be. It has to be curated to some extent. Um, so maybe, I think that a lot of people read the documentation and maybe 
other people in the audience feel the same way. I know my experience of the documentation has been sometimes there may be a piece that I'm reading and maybe it's, uh, you know, maybe it's a VPAC, which is a bunch of you the U.S. said. Uh, maybe that's not mentioned, but maybe you know, other pieces of accessibility um, are mentioned, like 508 or something like that. And maybe I want that one section that's more specific to U.S. Uh, mentioned in the documentation. Um, but I'm hesitant to make that request, and I'm just using an example that might not be the case for VPAC. Um, you know, that's something, could there be a button here that says, on um, each page that says request, you know, more information where you found something missing, and then it goes there, and it goes immediately to Mary, and then Mary would just get a cue of all those things, and then, um, and this goes back to an idea that we talked about this morning, Tom, where that was uh, from the table that I was sitting at, kind of an idea that every week an email would go out from you guys to say, these are the three areas we need help with this week, you know, how in the community uh, can we help more? I think it was a big part of this, you know, idea of how do we re- redesign the the, uh, the community website here. And uh, to get more involvement, having that sort of, you know, this page right now in this section needs to be rewritten, then, then you would know, hey, I can help on that. I really have an expertise on this section. It sounds like, you know, Mary or Tom has basically stated that this is Mary, we need more robust documentation. And then maybe it gets group written by three or four people that come in and edit that section potentially very, very quickly if they already have expertise there. I don't know if that helps at all, just an idea when I've been reading it. It's always like, what do you do if you want to add something and you're not quite sure if it makes sense? It kind of has to be very good. I think that the landing is very difficult. I think that makes sense for people who really understand code and what you use a pretty technical language. I think it might be something that maybe somewhere in the middle for those people who just aren't sure what to do, just the submit button. That can go to somebody else. No, I, I, so I was part of the longer discussion about it, and, and I think that Brian's idea about, um, you know, having a central place in the community documentation where we're um, uh, alerting uh, you know, all these most helpful moodlers uh, about uh, where it could use some love uh, could be very, very valuable. I think that the tools people would use are exactly as you say within um, Moodle, but it's probably a conversation, it's probably a forum discussion that people are subscribed to um, who are getting inputs from, from us about uh, what could use attention. And I love that. I mean, that's really very moodly. Um, Yeah, I think so. The next person will fix it, hopefully. So. I, like, uh, I like Michael's suggestion here this morning when he got up and he said, I know I'm not going to be able to take these badges to the grave. I know no one's going to care, but for some reason my brain still thinks it's awesome when I receive a badge. So I think the idea of badgeification where you say, you know, I've made X number of contributions, so I received this badge or that badge, and to extend out that badgeification, as silly as it is, um, I feel the same way. I thought that was a great way of looking at it. Somebody told you you could take it to the grave for those guys who put it on your tombstone, which I thought was hilarious this morning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'll help them set the best So the, for me, the other part of the documentation that's uh, a little concerning or more difficult to use is when you get out to kind of the fringes. So like you guys, every release, you do an amazing job of documenting all of your portions. What doesn't necessarily get as well documented is the plugins that people may use. So as, I, as I'm updating a plugin, the documentation on Google's wiki may not be there, or with the community, it's oftentimes sitting in a GitHub repository instead as a readme or something like that. that can also tend to throw people off, I think. 
So, um, the, if you see what I did there with the URL, you can type in uh, the URL of any page in Moodle, any script. So, a URL in Moodle, if you put it into the docs, it'll take you to the docs page for that. Mm -hmm. So, if I put mod data, which is the database module, that's what the, it is in the code, and that's what you see in the URL when you're using it, and it'll jump straight to the database activity. And this works for all third-party plugins. So any new plugin someone writes, it automatically will link to the right place in the docs, and that's where the docs should go. So if you're making any new plugins, just remember at the bottom of the pages, there is a link to Moodle Docs. You click on that, you'll come to an empty page, and that's where you put your docs. So it's kind of makes it quite automatic. But it does rely on people doing that. Um, and it's kind of often forgotten, I think, that last step. Probably should. I don't, don't know if it does actually, um, or not. Have you, you, you haven't noticed it? Well, that, that, to me, that's another, that, that's a good question, because as a contributor, there is a place for you to put, like, in the useful links area to say, here's where my documentation is, because it's, it's a field in that database that you fill out. So, if there were a way to do exactly what you said, to auto-generate a page in Google Docs, even if it just created a link to the other, other documentation. I don't know if that was automatic, but there is a, there is a docu documentation link in the plugins database. Yeah. And uh, I tried the automatic URL and that worked. It took me to the right place. Good. Um, yeah. It takes the developer to actually notice all the fields. Are you taking some notes, could you? Would you mind? Thanks. Yeah, it's not even my favorite. I think error messages are probably the hardest to get documented because realistically, the person that has to document that is the developer. They know what happened or what their logic was causing to happen. Okay. Um, there's one other docs I want to move to. Uh, it's the dev docs. So it's actually the development link on the top of Moodle the org. Um, this has a lot of content buried in here as well because there's a lot of people using it for scratch pages and early second steps and so on. Um, but the main 
main stuff is all on the front page. Um, so there is a full list of all the core APIs. If you're a developer, these are really useful to know. There's a lot of APIs in Moodle. We, we put it quite a bit of effort into updating those. We have a case in the sprint, and all the developers just focus on getting those back up to date. Um, we are working on a tutorial as well, which yes. um, There are some little tutorials for, for various things, but there's, there's, there is a, a new overall, a big tutorial. So basically, to teach a developer from scratch, how to, how to write Moodle code. Um, that's, that's coming. It's been a few different versions of just getting better and better. Um, but, yeah, there is a lot of stuff here to tell. So, from my perspective, the one that I can never seem to find, maybe it, it actually exists, but it's the Web Services API. So, this is all documentation for how do I create plugins. My question is, how do I use those APIs as an external vendor or someone who wants to write a portal API? Like, these documents, I don't even know what variables I'm supposed to be passing to it or what I'm expecting back, what format I'm expecting back. Automated, right? There is a there is an admin script that will, will uh, show this to you. Find it now. All the functions here. So when you click on that, it actually automatically. It's been a long time since I looked at this. I'm not writing code anymore these days. Where is it? Where is it? Uh, Where? Ah, there it is. Which, ah, oh, the web server. Thank you. Uh, so you said print all. Um, so that's all the parameters. Uh, and our web server is not printed. The, the, uh, the way web services are defined in Moodle is in this way where we can generate documentation automatically from it. So it would be good from a relationship with vendors type of view. You don't necessarily unless they install Moodle locally. Yeah. So they never see this page. Um, I think we oh, well, awesome. we, we went this way because those things do change and evolve, and you want them to be accurate. And and you put them on a Moodle doc. You have to put them for every version of Moodle, and it becomes a huge maintenance thing. I suppose it could dump it as a tool. Most outside vendors are probably just setting up at least the test ones. I think the key is, I think both you and I maybe have an uncertainty of how to get here. So, and this goes back to maybe just, you know, how do we get more community involvement? There are some people that probably knew how to do this. So maybe, you know, that web series we're talking about were uh, kind of an extended loop format where these sorts of topics can be put out by experts and, uh, and they can receive a badge. And who doesn't want a badge? Here it is. It's at the top of the creating web service client. It's the top. It says, go to administration, plug in web service, and say, okay. yep. so, um, 
in the future, actually considering dropping most of the protocols. Um, and the other thing, actually, it's a bit of an aside, but um, we, we do plan that eventually that the, the front end of Moodle will, will probably only use these. Um, that we won't we'll completely separate the front end from the back end, just like those the, web, the Moodle web, sorry, the mobile client. But we'll just do that everywhere. And that means that a very big list of APIs. Thing, so yeah, it's going to be a lot of information. Uh, all right, so that's the docs. Uh, I guess uh, we've got. Um, let me just talk about the tracker. Um, how many people? How many people here have used the tracker? This year? Uh, most of you, I guess. So the, you've got banks. <laughs> um, so the middle tracker has its own login, and it's a Jira. Uh, there's a lot of projects. We have a lot more projects than you know. There's a lot of internal projects and things. We use it for all kinds of things. Um, but the main one for Moodle is just one called Moodle. And uh, yeah, we must be up to 60,000 plus issues. Um, this is so essential to the whole working of Moodle. Uh, we use this constantly every day. When it's down for five minutes, you hear screams from the developers. Uh, very, very, very active. So our whole process is totally built around this. And the, uh, we use it for sorting and prioritizing and you can vote on things. And uh, Generally, the discussions that matter about new features are in here. So the, there might be discussions elsewhere, but at some point they've got to come to the tracker. This is the, it is tracking things. It is the definitive source. Uh, and it links things together. So here's a, a bug, an issue, uh, and it's got links to the repository where the code is out on GitHub. You can dive straight in and see the exact changes that David did. Um, if you think about it, the whole complexity in this system, it's just mind numbing. There is so much information in here over the years. But um, it's also, we do expect users to come here if they want to tell us about problems. So you've got this com complex system, which does scare people a bit. Uh, so we usually recommend people go and try and find a forum on Moodle.org and talk about it there and just somebody will eventually turn it into a tracker issue. Or uh, another way is to go and join the Moodle Users Association and raise it there, and then that will eventually get focused. That will end up here too. Um, actually, we recently decided that all the Moodle User Association work would always be here in the tracker open, and the main uh, reporting about it is in here as well. So, um, uh, yeah, you can find out the status of Moodle User Association. Moodle User Association work. But has anyone got any, I don't know, thoughts? Uh, is this still a good thing to be doing? You know? I don't have to push into this, but I know that when I ask things in the Moodle forums, you usually get friendly responses. You know, speak to developers, you have to be aware that they Hello? And uh, I kind of used to that because you know, I have a lot of developer friends and understand their language. Uh, I think it might be shocking to some users sometimes when in a tracker and someone says, you yeah, know, that just can't be done. And, uh, 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 and so it's, it's interesting because I think that it's, as you get deeper and deeper and closer and closer to things, that um, uh, the environments change in terms of. Um, what you can expect. Yeah. 
I had to ask the question, wasn't that last time you guys like went there and purged old tickets? Oh, a year or two ago. It happens every now and then. Every now and then we have a purge. <laughs> um, yeah, if you there we have a little algorithm, we can't remember the exact thing, but it's, it's things that are clearly haven't been touched or looked at or thought about for years. Then we just go, well, let's just <laughs> close that. And anybody who did care about it can reopen it. Cause, and they'll get an, an email about it. So we say, we are closing this because it seems to be a dead issue. But if you care, just reply and it'll open up again. Um, so we purge it that way. Still, there are thousands of things. There's a couple of joke ones. This is uh, the one about solving the climate problem. Uh, it's a running bug that's been going since 2008. Uh, and every now and then, somebody makes a, a little pun or a joke or just kind of keeps on going here. Different things we can do to solve the climate problem. We need outlets sometimes to de stress. There's a few other Easter eggs buried in there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we have a triage process. So we usually just encourage, encourage people to write the best they can. Um, and there is a triage process, the stable team. We have one team of developers who focus on bug fixing and, and stable issues. Uh, they will triage the new bugs, which means look at them and decide what to do with them. And they'll clean up the language or fix the priorities or change the, the categories and, and make it fit in better. Um, hopefully through that, people learn how to do it better next time. In general, that works. Is there a location for defining, I can't remember if it's tags or, um, I don't think it's components, but oftentimes I see uh, accessibility used in areas or for tickets that I personally wouldn't necessarily say is accessibility, mm -hmm. um, or access is oftentimes what they're looking for. Is, is there a place in here that, that that's defined so that a user could say, oh, okay, this is what that tag would mean and when I should use it kind of thing? Uh, the label, is that what you mean? Yeah. Or the, or the components? Uh, I think it's. I think it's a little of both um, components with accessibility, and I think it, it may end up with accessibility just used in different locations, I guess, in terms of where I would think. Mm -hmm. uh, well, the usual way is the components. There are components for Moodle and Bit, and there are some which are concepts like accessibility. You can have any number of them. Uh, you can easily just create them, actually. Uh, so sometimes people create things they shouldn't. But generally it's pretty clean, I think, the list. Uh, but yeah, it's getting quite long. You have to kind of know there's an accessibility. Um, and then there's the labels, which also you can just create a label at any time. Um, you know, and it'll just say, you want to make a new label? So it's the folksonomy. With all the caveats the folksonomy has. Um, we have, some, we have a lot of special labels that we use. So far, the trust approach is working okay. We don't have a lot of problems with wrong labels, generally. But is there like a wiki page in the development box so that you can like, create a new label and that's the development definition? There totally is, yeah. There's a really long page about how to use the tracker as a developer. It's, it's a big read. <laughs> we should force people to read it. <laughs> Um, oh, it's probably, it's, I'm sure it's linked to the front page, actually, of the tracker. Uh, so we have, yeah, it's telling you to search it first. Um, yeah, there's the tracker, and then there's the tracker. Um, 
this is pretty up to date, actually. The developers do keep this up to date. And the general stuff. I'm not going to keep searching here in front of you forever, but there is a, oh, there we go, the tracker guide. <laughs> so that's all the, these are standard labels that we use to kind of group issues together um, or indicate that something's been done to it. Um, so this special one you'll see, uh, so Moodle Partners, Moodle Partner issues get some priority, the issues that come through Moodle Partners, and you'll sometimes see issues that have a uh, partner on them. Around the release time, you'll see a lot of uh, docs required or dev docs required if it's something, you know, a new, new API or if it's a new feature, it's just docs required and that's the check that then forms a checklist so that Mary Cooch and Helen then go through and make sure that docs are being done or prodding the right person to make sure they're done. So we have a lot of little subsystems and processes like that all the way through. We move on from the tracker. Oh, there was four plates. <laughs> it, it, it's extremely exciting, actually. It's, a, it's an incredible thing we're building here together. Uh, so, much, so much stuff. Um, yeah. okay. um, we've got some demo sites. Uh, I'd really like to improve these, but they're not too bad. They, um, this Mount Orange School, if you haven't looked at it, has an awful, a lot of content, and uh, you can choose a role uh, and, and really try things. But there's quite a lot of content. There's quite a time to go through it all. Uh, but there, there is a bunch of stuff there, um, and those are updated every time we do releases. There's a QA testing site, and that always shows the next version of Moodle, and it can be quite rough, uh, and it's available during the QA testing period. So right towards the end of, the, of our six month release cycle, we have a period of three weeks, four weeks, where we have a lot of volunteers coming. And when you go into the tracker, you'll see a link to the Q, current QA process. And you can just grab any of the issues that you see there uh, and do it, like test it. Uh, so those QA issues will say, you know, I can post uh, to a forum. So someone goes and tries that with the current version, either on this site or their own copy, and they come back and go, yep, that works, and close that issue. And so we have a big checklist of things to check manually before every release. Yeah. I, I want to test files with 
shown has failed, and there's the number of tests. Like, we're up to 567 of these tests now. And as that number dwindles, the, 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 re, the remaining number get more people looking at them and discussing them, and, you know, we, we, we always resolve them by the end. And, and we, if they're not finished, we will often delay the release a week, just give it a bit more time to make sure these things get Isn't there also, I thought there was an admin script that the devs had created to auto-create courses with, like, a number of users, a number of assignments yeah. already pre-populated? There is, yeah. There is. Uh, I don't exactly how to get there right now, but there is a uh, there, there is a script for, just so you know that will create random courses with random users and random content and forum posts and everything. Um, there's another form of testing if you want to get involved with early work. Um, prototypes.moodle.net. And we have very early prototypes of things. Uh, some of these are bits that haven't been taken away except Moodle 3.3. But you can see here the new calendar. Um, so that's one of the things that we're working on now. I'm quite keen to see how this looks myself, actually. I've seen it for some weeks. Um, so you'll find a bunch of Moodle sites there that are running on fresh code. And it tells you how to log in. Log in feature. And um, also on the front page was the link to the Moodle bug issue. So if you've got some thoughts about how the prototype's going, Go and comment on the issue to get a bit of feedback. So far, not so amazing. I think all the cool stuff hasn't landed yet. <laughs> They're all working on it elsewhere here on different branches. Um, Quite a lot of nice stuff is happening here in the new year. Oh, well, it's coming. Um, yeah, so let's just take this to the bottom of this. Uh, okay, we've got running out of time. Um, there was one last thing I wanted to mention uh, off the menu here is the translation. Um, many, many more people use Moodle not in English. English is a minority language in the world, um, and in the Moodle world. So, uh, it's, it's, uh, this is our website. We've built a website for translating things, and you can see here there's been 1.2 million strings translated. A string is just a, a bunch of text, a small amount of text, like all the, the buttons and the, the, all the things in the Moodle interface. And uh, you can contribute. So if you speak a language and you want to get involved, uh, you this is a Moodle site with a whole lot of custom code. And uh, for some reason, I don't know why I can't log in. Try to Google log in to see if it works. Oh, what? Okay. I have to go and, to go and uh, uh, confirm. That's, it should be. But oh, I don't know if you can see that. Anyway, um, the Amos, we call it Amos, and um, it's an automated manipulation of strings. And we have a, a really detailed interface for comparing the English to your new translation, and you can do all the translations there. And in the back end, it's using Git, it's chipping all this stuff in, and it, it all flows out to people's Moodle sites. So when they update the language packs, they're always getting the latest language packs. And many of these uh, language, trans one language may have many, many people who contribute as well. And there are sometimes arguments. There's an argument about Brazilian right now, <laughs> about, uh, you know, how, how things should be translated, and so they just have to be worked out. We had, an, in the early days of Moodle, Spanish suddenly exploded into um, many flavors, and I just let it flourish, so 
someone said, oh, Caribbean Spanish is very different to uh, Spanish Spanish. I said, okay, make a Caribbean pack. And this continued until we had like 15 or more Spanish variations. And then in the Spanish community, they all said, this is bloody ridiculous. Um, let's all consolidate, because actually the differences were just a couple of words, like new words that were like the word for computer or something. Um, and so they consolidated all back again. And then I turned my back for a couple of years, and I came back, and they all come back again. <laughs> so it's just funny. But, um, no, M- Moodle has, I would say, quite e- easily the most translations of any LMS in the world. Um, now, they're not all complete. And there is supposed to be a report on here, which I keep asking to get put on here about the, the report. But um, uh, it's on the download page. Uh, here's all the language packs. So you can see all the languages and who's maintaining them. Um, so we, we keep a lot of automatic statistics. Uh, I mean, look at some of these languages. You've probably never heard of Bashkort. And Big Lama. Oh, yeah, you do? Oh, wow. <laughs> see what we discover? That's amazing. That's cool. You brought me. I actually got the, the fun opportunity to create a new language when we entered the K-12 market, but there's no a K-12 language pack because they don't like the word course for some reason. They like classes better. Yes. Um, there's English pirate version. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's good. There you go, Jay. <laughs> So how is English US K-12 different to English for kids, I wonder? So when I went through it, I looked at the English for kids, and then there's just not that, so the, the word course is still in English for kids. Huh. So what do they do? So all the teachers I talked to, like, they use class. Class. And I actually had to write a program script to go through the entire Moodle language training and yeah. find every single one. There's a lot of them, yeah. So yeah, um, and I, I, I would actually credit a lot of Moodle's success for the fact that I implemented translation really early, like right at the beginning. Yeah. Um, that's great. <sighs> okay, any other topics? Anyone want to bring up anything? Or, uh, the Moodle part, there we go, that's what I was going to talk about. So, you know, we've got Moodle.com as the other half, where the more commercial sides are. I hate this website. Um, there is a new one that's due to drop pretty soon. We've been working on it, uh, so in the next month or two. Um, but uh, we have a lot of middle parties. By the fault, it shows you the ones in the country you're in. So, seven in the US. So, if you look at them all, it's quite a lot. Um, has anybody got any comments about partners? You know, we've got some partners here. You can ask a meta question. What is the role of partners in the Moodle universe? Go and ask the hard questions. You can ask them anonymously if you want to. Except we can see you. But. Oh, yeah. Yes. Uh, when we gave them the quote for that, uh, drag and drop is like a third of the work. It's quite a lot. And at first they couldn't afford it, the drag and drop thing. So they decided to go ahead without drag and drop. And then we had a bit more negotiating and we came to some arrangements to, to do it after all. So. Um, Drag and drop for your personal calendar items is quite easy. So you literally, on the calendar, you'll see uh, an event, and you just like Google Docs, you drag it on the day. Easy. If it's an assignment due date, and you drag and drop, there's a whole lot of consequences, right? So you need to pop up dialogues, and you need to do a lot of work, and you need to do this in a way that will handle any plugin that has dates. 
and that's a lot of work. That was the, the big work. That last bit I just mentioned about the activities may not be in 3.4, maybe 3.5. We'll see how it goes. So we've, we've committed to the rest uh, for 3 4. And yes, and I can show you a full competitor analysis that the UX team did uh, as they went through everything uh, and you know, try and get our calendar uh, these features matching everything else out there. Yes. The, the, pro the problem with that is that is the, the Moodle Users Association, their original brief was make it like Google Calendar. It, it sounds obvious, but actually when you really analyze it, it it's impossible. You can't make Google Calendar. I mean, um, I don't mean technically, I just mean it's, it's different inside of LMS. Yeah. Uh, so we, we went back to them and we made them... Uh, define what they needed as user stories, very detailed, exactly what things they wanted to be possible. And then we went back and looked at the design. Uh, yeah. So, uh, I'll talk a little bit about the whole partners. Uh, I'll say a couple words, uh, just my name's Dan, I'm on the side. Everyone knew what I was here today, but uh, I'm on the Supreme Bank Education. Uh, prior to this, prior to living uh, in a country that spoke with Lama, uh, in Vanuatu, close by to uh, Australia, where I was a teacher for a while after that I went to Aleutia. Um, I was Aleutia for about six years, and uh, everyone in the room, how many of one in Aleutia product at their school, either Banner, Power Campus, Colleague, how many people were in that? So, I was a technical team there, and talking about community over the last couple of days, talking about the role of partners, um, I always reflect back on that time and those people that run those close source products or any close source product for that matter, they don't really have much in the way of a community. Um, I think uh, anyone who's running a listening product probably expects restoration uh, as they put in support tickets in the past. So I think it's just always a good chance for us to kind of answer these questions and just reflect on the difference between close source products. Like, I think there's many questions on the management system. Uh, you know, may have noticed some of some others around here this week. Um, and there's open first. And uh, I think that uh, when we talk about community and we talk about the role in the community, I uh, think it's, it's, uh, it's something that we can take for granted that we actually do have a voice in this community uh, because of those open first. And for me, coming from the open, and having a service team, the reason I like the reason is that I do think. Well, because I have so many clients that I work with, so I say, can you do this? Can you do that? And the answer is always no. I uh, say, so we can't do that because we're not just apologizing quite often. It's really the opposite. You know, you have an open source platform, everything is possible with an open source platform. Uh, so I think uh, it's been fascinating for me to have a lot of people to hear about, you know, the, the ideas of revamping this community and the questions that I what can the community, what work can we do, and how can we make this really good enough of the last fight, get more of the last result. But as I think of the whole world, I think uh, to my friends, you know, what can we do as a partner? And I have a couple of friends here that are in the audience, and uh, how can we get their voices heard more? Uh, and I just think about it some of these ways, and what about if we start to focus on this past time, and how can the community be a kind of person, because the people in this world, I think, I feel that I've got to that the other people that couldn't be here, that I've been for life, that we want to do more, and we want to have a bigger role in this community. But I think what's amazing is we want to hear all these speakers, and many of them are new even to me. I haven't been familiar with the language translation piece that they've been out of here in Spain, but I'm going to do that, and I couldn't find any of us that are living over there anymore. So I think there may be more of an amazing thing for this education. I think we're going to focus on the incredible set of documentation from Empire of Open Source Community. I think it's a community of web and product. I think it's going to get to know the problem that we don't necessarily have to work with us in the community and to learn to have a plan. So I think it's a pretty impressive set of code we have here, but it's really important that more people live in it. Think of that better than, you know, tackle it, certainly. You got to do that, you know, 
to give you time and money that I know that I have and I live on. I think that I'm not thinking, but there are other ways to get involved. So I think that's fine in my mind. I'm thinking I'm going to be a lot of money as well. It's fine in the time that you don't do that as you want. And how you can argue with that. And, you know, I think that one of the most important things is to be looking, you know, going down and quickly. And I think I've lived in the world. Uh, it's not important for them to tell you that you know, what they thought of the world is how they want to stop it. I'd love to invite somebody out of the last few years to explain the legal work for us. So if you go down to the place, it'd be really interesting. Um, but I think that, um, my back to the end of the community side, um, you know, not just because of this, but this is out here with all those things that, you know, do you feel like we're getting an active house? Because as we've been growing, we haven't really been able to focus as much as we'd like on talking to our clients about, you know, what they can do to get more involved, coming to more work, you know, so happy to see the clients that we have with the day. But we haven't got a staff that we've been to it. And I think that uh, many of our clients are going to be in different ways they can participate and they just don't know, you know, how to get involved and how to do that. So I don't know if there's anybody here that, you know, might be in the United States and that about, you know, anything that's uh, kind of young youth and uh, being a local partner would be one of the things to do. And, and if you see anything here, so yeah, I'd really like to be more than once in this area or here's the part that I found confusing. I guess the other one is say, um, from my perspective being a partner, I think over the years we've seen that there are kind of various levels 
of partners. You've got partners who are really good at serving small clients, say 10 to 20 users, where they're just starting out, and they're really passionate about helping those users get up and running and get going. And you've got medium partners who are figuring out, okay, I'm able to serve both the small and the large, I'm trying to figure out where I am, I'm finding my niche, I'm figuring out what you're doing, and then you've got partners like Blackboard who are, I feel like, as the largest partner out there in the world, it's our job to actually help fill in gaps where Moodle may not have time, may not have the resources to do, but also to bring forth community members like Aaron and Marlene who have information that we discover just by being part of the Moodle community and going to these moots and having conversations and making sure that that information is heard and that information is brought out. Um, so to me, it's a lot about stewardship and being there that, that since we've been here so long, we're making sure that everybody's voice is heard and that it's, it's being brought to the community in a way that can help out. I was kind of an interesting story where just to go back to the apartment. One of my clients that's here, I don't think Mary's in the room. I don't see Mary, but Mary, are you here? I don't think so. Um, but they, uh, they got five guys in FPE, and they're running, uh, they're running Moodle with us, and they have an OPM has come in and just taken over the online program called Academic Partnerships. I don't know if anyone uses that kind of partnerships or OPMs. I don't know if they make the first one. And Thank you. 
we are kind of the tail, and we think that we're going to come out that way, we can show that with every other client. So, you know, that's the best of these strategies. We have a strategic partner for the client, or an extension of our IP department, we're hoping to save them time, and if they say, hey, if we use a virtual platform, we can say, you know, collaborate for good options, here's why this might work, or, you know, give you a button, or the general market will ask them to show it now, but, you know, so we're going to have a good job of the board trying to do the board trying to do the board trying to do uh, I'm conscious of time. Uh, if it's okay with you guys, yeah, we, uh, we'll wrap it up. Um, 5.40, in fact. So, um, look, uh, I hope that was some useful tips out of there, some, some good things. Uh, we have a contact page on Moodle.com if you ever want to ask um, about anything related to partners or related to other things. Come there. You can find us. Um, and uh, we can recommend things to you or point in the right direction if you get lost. And that's the end of the moot. Are you at first? Thank you. Uh, thanks, everyone, for coming along and making it an event. And uh, good to see some of you and meet some of you. And uh, let's go and have a bit of a rest and get on to the party. See you around there tonight. See ya. Thank you.